So how's it going, my comics at Army? We're here today with Edward Davis from Finish Line Comics. How you doing, Edward? Great. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. So what have you been doing the last time we talked? Six, seven months ago. Yeah, I've been kind of keeping with the same release schedule with Immortal Era, because that's my main ongoing title. So I've released a few issues of that one. I have the next issue, issue 11. I just issue, issue nine was the last one that I did a Kickstarter for. Issue 10, we have the artwork all done. So as soon as I finish this campaign that, that I'm working on, that one will be going up on Kickstarter. And then issue 11, the artwork is done and we're about to start the artwork for issue 12. I'm also working on my second series, Corruptor. That one is live on Kickstarter right now. It closes on Thursday, and that's for issue two. And that one's just a four-issue miniseries because I don't think I could juggle two giant ongoing series at the same time. And then I have a third series that's going to be coming out, and that one is going to be called, it's just called Floaters, and it tells the story of the eye floaters that you develop, and I developed them in such a bad way that ended up requiring two surgeries to get rid of them. So one was a laser surgery, then one they actually had to do some cutting and everything. So mm. while I was stuck in hospital waiting rooms, and this was hours upon hours, I mean, I, I had one day where I spent a total of 17 hours in hospital waiting rooms. And I the nurse came up to me, she's like, all right, you're sitting here. What can I do for you? I'm like, just bring me a stack of paper and a pen. And while I was there, I wrote this whole kind of wild story about how floaters are actually parasites that infect your brain and make you completely insane. So, cause that's about how I was feeling that day. And, and, and while I'm, I'm sitting there writing this story, some of the stuff that ends up in the book happened in real life. So in the book, there's this, this crazy homeless woman who's screaming at the guy and telling him, you're not real, you're fake. Well, that act, that encounter actually happened as I was walking out of the hospital. So I was like, wow, this story is just writing itself. So that one, the letterer for Immortal Era and Corruptor, Dan Schmidt, who also has the Worms Crawl In and Worms Crawl Out stories, he's going to be doing the artwork for that one. So I'm excited to work with him as an artist on this particular book. And then I have another title that I'm going to announce later this year that's taking two public domain characters and kind of merging them together. So lots of stuff, trying to keep myself busy writing lots of stories and working on both those stories are already going into production. So probably later next year, we'll see them. And then I also have a story in the newest Cthulhu anthology that's live right now. And that Cthulhu invades fairy tales. And for this particular one, I took the Grimm's fairy tale of the fisherman and his wife and merged it together with the deep ones mythology and created a story where Every time the fisherman makes a wish, his wife becomes more and more a deep one until the end when she's fully, if she's fully metamorphosized into a deep one, and that summons Cthulhu into the world. Wow. You have been, you have been busy. I, I like it. You were just, you're just kicking ass all the way along. So with, with the, um, anthology with travis it is travis mm -hmm. doing it right it is yes do you get to pick your character or is it assigned to you how does how does that work basically when he puts out the the call for the cthulhu stories he gives a list of the grimm's fairy tale stories that he wants to use and you take your pick from those grimm's fairy tales and you send him a short pitch you say okay here's the story i want to adapt here's my pitch of what I'll do with it. And then he selects one pitch of the ones you sent in. And at that point, you then have to go and write the story and he approves it. And from there, you send it to your art team. So I think I sent in two or three different pitches for this one. And the, the one that he was the one for the fisherman and his wife. And it's already planned that we're going to be having a volume two for that. And for the volume two, I chose the um, the Golden Touch as my story. And I'm combining that 
with the Dunwich Horror. So that one is already approved and we're about to actually start working on the art for that one. So when volume two comes out, I'll have a completely different feel and vibe as we combine the Dunwich Horror and the Golden Touch. Sweet. And Dan Smith is working on floaters or corruptor? He's working on floaters. He does he does lettering for Immortal Era and Corruptor both. So he's oh, sweet. he's my full time letterer for both of those stories. And then the floaters one is the one he's actually gonna do the artwork. I'm assuming he'll letter it as well since he, he does that anyway. So he'll be lettering and doing the principal art for that one. Yeah, the I read his book, uh, Worms Crawl In. I don't think mm -hmm. I've read the second one yet. It was pretty it's pretty kick ass. The artwork was awesome. Yeah, he he's he's a great artist and a great storyteller and he doesn't he mm -hmm. doesn't write a lot of stories, but he did actually He's, he's done art and is writing a story for the Cthulhu anthology that's coming out. The one that that one's live on Kickstarter right now. So Dan did art for stories and wrote a story. So he has a lot of involvement in the Cthulhu anthologies that are coming out. How many Cthulhu anthologies? Is it just one? I think this is one volume, but I believe this the fairy tales one is going to be three volumes altogether. Wait, is it going to be three different teams for each book, or is he going to carry the um, teams all the way through? You're, it's going to be different teams and then some repeat teams. So I'll be coming in with the same team for my second story, and I'm using the same art team as Immortal Era. Sweet. So Caesar and Maya, who do the, the um, pencils and the coloring, are also working on the um, Cthulhu stories. I like it. I like it a lot. Where are you going to be this year? Do you have cons planned? I do. Yeah, I just I just finished up at San Diego Comic Con, and then my next two shows are going to be one is a horror convention that's pretty close to the house, it's the Inland Empire Creepy Horror Con, and I'll be doing that one, and that is the second week of September. And then after the creepy IE con, I'll be doing LA Comic Con. How was San Diego? Was it did it turn out good? Yeah, San Diego was great. I mean, it's always gigantic crowds and it's like certain points in time. You can't even your your row is just stuffed and it's, you know, complete <laughs> insanity, but always a good time. It's kind of, if you think of the cons that are out there, San Diego is kind of the Super Bowl of the con scene. I, I, I got to work up to San Diego because I don't want to, I don't want to go from like the small ones around here or the ones I've yeah. been to and mm -hmm. like libraries and gymnasiums to go to San Diego. Yeah. Which is massive. You know, what is it? A week long? It's five days. So it's Wednesday through Sunday. And yeah, it's 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 a big one and the I mean, even if you don't have a ticket, there's a ton of stuff going on outside. They have all of these pop-ups. They convert restaurants, bars, hotels around the area into, you know, themes with different shows and things like that. So you could not have a ticket and have a full con experience just walking around outside. So yeah, San Diego has so much going on. And then when you get inside, it's now the main convention center and three of the neighboring hotels are also hosting panels. So it just <laughs> it grows and grows every year. And you could you could literally never step foot in the con and still have a complete, you know, satisfying experience just doing the surrounding hotels and all of the little, you know, pop ups that are all over the area. You did a panel at San Diego, didn't you? I did, yeah. So I did an indie comic writers panel. So that was my first time doing a panel at San Diego Comic Con. So that was really exciting, and it was it was pretty well attended, especially considering, like I said, there's hotels and everything, and we were one of the offsite ones. And even with that, we had a pretty good room, and we had a lot of interest. So there was a lot of questions and. We had questions all the way to the point that they told us, all right, your panel's over. You guys got to leave. So, 
yeah, it was it was a great experience, something that I had always wanted to do and was really happy that I finally got to experience that this year. Yeah, congrats. Um how did you how did you get invited to it? Was it It was something I, there's a group that I follow on Facebook that's just called um Let's All Do Conventions and Take Over the World. <laughs> and one of the one of the people who is in that group sent out a thing saying, "Okay, who would like to be on a San Diego Comic-Con panel this year?" And I said, "I would love to." So he he brought us in and he was the moderator of the panel. So he was just looking for people that write indie comics. And then he kind of researched a little bit. So he knew what questions to ask each one. So of course, being a teacher, that was one of the questions they asked was, what do you, you know, do you incorporate comic books into your classroom? And I definitely do. I, I do that. I have a comic writing program for the kids that I do as an after school thing. So my hope now is that next year I can not only be on a panel, but host a panel at Comic-Con. So I'm going to submit my panel pro proposition to do a panel about comic books in the classroom. And I think doing a panel and teaching, I feel, would be similar, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're used to kind of standing in front of a group of people. It's just, you know, these were Comic-Con attendees instead of a group of, you know, smaller kids but you're up there you're talking and you know it, it it becomes natural it should because you have to do it day after day year after year and if you're if you get that that nervousness in front of a classroom they'll eat you up they know <laughs> like sharks yeah. and blood they they will take you apart so luckily I, i'm good with that so i had that comfort in front of a room of people and also like i said it's just something I'm hoping next year I can be a moderator hosting my own panel and just find the the overlap ones that are teachers and also you know, comic creators. So it's, it's funny because one of the people on my upcoming project, the one dealing with the two public domain characters, she's also a teacher. So, you know, you find that, like you said, there's a lot of people, there's doctors, there's lawyers, there's police officers, there's people, you know, military officers, and they're also comic creators. So the whole stigma is kind of disappearing of the, you know, the, the, the trolls in their, their mom's basement. And yeah. I, there's those too. I mean, I'm sure they still exist. <laughs> Have you, you work with high schoolers, right? I work actually elementary school, but I've worked with high schoolers in a summer program. So when I did a summer program, it was a summer program for gifted students. And we did a whole seminar on creation. It was, I had, I worked alongside a few other people. One was a part-time filmmaker. That's what he did. One was a podcaster. And then I was also able to reach out to the people that I knew from that world. Okay, I knew podcasters. I knew um, filmmakers. And I was able to reach out and we were able to bring them in via Zoom. Or, and it was nice because we could have those people in the room, even though they're across the country and really talk to these kids about creation and have them talk to people that have created. Because I know nothing about the art process. I mean, I know kind of how it goes, layouts, the pencils, the ink, but I don't draw. So bringing in an artist was a lot more impactful where they could see, okay, here's how I do layouts. I tell them layouts exist, but that doesn't mean I know what, what goes into that. So being able to bring those in and have high schoolers go into it. And then they created these big ongoing projects that were a year long, and I was able to guide them through it the whole way. So even though I teach elementary school, I've worked with high schoolers. And for that one, it was just any gifted kid who wanted to explore creation of a comic book, I was the guiding teacher for that one. So I got to work alongside them for a whole year. And it was a really amazing experience to be able to do that. That's so cool. Cause even if they don't go on to make their own comic book after that year, it can lead into filmmaking. Like, you know, you can branch off with the know-how of how to write a comic into so many other things I would imagine. Oh yeah. It's just in, in that field of, you know, creativity, they can take it other directions. Mm -hmm. I guide them in the way that I know. 
but in the end they can take it all over the place but it's just you know working with deadlines and building a project was what it was really teaching them because whatever industry they go into they're going to have to face deadlines and you know working extra to make sure you get things done on time so giving those early experiences when they're in high school and now those kids that would have been high schoolers this was three or four years ago they're probably moving into college and who knows what direction this will take them i wish i had a teacher like you in in school you know comics i was telling somebody else the other day i was like now is the greatest time to be alive because if you have a if you have an idea of fandom you can 3d print a toy or plushies like everything is at your fingertips now yeah you You know so many more resources i mean you can do anything in the creative field is right there where when when i was first you know thinking about being a creative i thought the only thing i can really do is write a book because I didn't realize you can go into the comic field, even if you're not an artist. And, you know, you can print your own books now and you can do them in color and do it for a lot cheaper than you figure like Eastman and Laird, when they were doing the turtles, they had to do it in black and white. They self-printed. And most of those self-printed books from the eighties and the nineties, they were all black and white because that was all they could afford. Mm -hmm. Look at Jeff Smith who did the bone series same thing black and white shipped it right out right from his garage and now there there's it's a lot easier to do something like that whatever it may be like i said you can make 3d figures you can say all right i'm going to create my own elaborate board game and you have that it's at your fingertips yeah what social medias are you on nowadays ed i am on i have a tiktok account that's under finish line comics i have my Instagram under Finish Line Comics, Twitter's also Finish Line Comics. I also created a Finish Line Comics YouTube channel where I post little one minute reviews from different creators to just kind of talk about some great books that are out there. And I do it quick. It's like every single review is one minute or less. So I just kind of trim the fat because I know a lot of people don't want to listen to a 20, 30 minute review of a book. So I I, I do the opposite. It's like here, it's one minute, and yeah, it's hard to fit it all in. But I do those reviews. I also have a live that I do on Saturday morning, where you it's a Saturday morning comic talk. So I do that once a week, and that goes on my Facebook and on my YouTube. I like it. Um, is there anything you want to say before we go? No. Hopefully, get out there, back corruptor. It's on its last couple of days and back the Cthulhu, um, to Cthulhu, Cthulhu invades fairy tales. I have a great story in there and just, I've seen the work. I've been able to see kind of sneak previews of what everyone's done. And it is incredible artwork, amazing storytelling from all the creators that are involved. So you don't want to miss out on that one. And that one still has a longer window of time that it's, that's going to be running. So check that out, check out Corruptor and then, Head to Finish Line Comics, all of all the social medias to get all your information about Immortal Era, Corruptor, and then Floaters and my new title that we're going to be announcing in October. All right. I appreciate you taking the time to come talk with me. Always great. Always, always, always a great time talking with you. Thank you. What? You mean you haven't subscribed to Comic Chat Authority? Oh, come on. Subscribe already. What are you waiting for? It's no big deal. Like, man, don't forget to tell him to hit that like button. Yeah, yeah, that too. Just subscribe.